Hi, thanks, Simon. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the MPA Expand Your Services with Timpa Health webinar. Um, I appreciate you all taking the time. Obviously, it's late in the evening. You've all had a long day, so we really appreciate you joining live today. Um, my name's Helen, and I'm the uh, Key account one of the key account directors at Tim Health. My colleague Graham, who will be um, presenting shortly, um, is our new business manager. So you, you've kind of got us both this evening. I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're going to cover. Um, so a bit of an idea of the agenda. So I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to Tim Health, who we are, um, and I'm going to play a video, a short video by our CEO and founder, Dr. Krishan Ramdu. Um, I'd then like to talk a little bit about the current landscape and why this additional service is so vital to your customers with there being a massive unmet need out there. Um, I'm then going to quickly run through the features because the Timper system, our award-winning Timper system, it does a lot more than what a lot of people realise. So I'll give you a, a very brief overview of all the different features. Hand you over to Graham at that point, who will go through the Timper panel, which is a cloud-based storage, which facilitates the ability of the remote review platform for advice and guidance for non ear specialists. So giving people that confidence to deliver the service when they haven't got an ear and ear care background. Um, Graham will run through the marketing and how we can support you there. He'll also um, run through the costs and the training program, our blended fully accredited training program. Before we start, it would be really interesting um, if Simon can just share some poll questions that we've got, just pure interest and it's a bit of a conversation starter. So Simon, would you like to share some of those questions? So the first question is, do you currently offer microsuction earwax removal uh, services? So that's the microsuction, not the irrigation. Some pharmacies have trained with other companies and they may use other equipment, um, which is absolutely fine. It means that if you have trained previously with another company, then you can um, we can retrain you um, to be able to use the Timper, which has a lot more features um, for clinical governance, record keeping, advice and guidance and so on. So it's looking like it's about 13%. And there's a possibility that some of those 13% actually use the Timper already. So um, thank you so much. That's really interesting. Yeah. So it's good to, good to notice as well, because we already know that pharmacies are going down the route of offering all these different services and ear care being a huge one for a good couple of years now. But even how big the ear care side of it is in pharmacies, it's still only 13% of the people on the call today, mm -hmm. which... It's quite surprising, actually. I expected a higher number than that. So on average, how many customers inquire about earwax softening products per week within your pharmacy? That could be ear oil or olive oil, Otex. Um, and what, wow, okay. What that's demonstrating is that even without advertising the service, you are still getting people walking to your counter day in, day out, asking they've got a problem with earwax buildup. Um, and, and obviously, if it's pharmacists joining us, it, you may not even be aware of the full extent if it's the counter assistants or the dispensers or technician that are having those conversations and selling those products as well. But that's um, really interesting. So it's quite varied as well, which I'm curious to is that. Is that because of the areas they're in? Is is it because there's um, different levels of demand? It would be good to know that actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but to be, you know, even three to five, thirty four percent, five to eight customers. I mean, these are people that need help, and, and they are coming to you and asking for it. But can you imagine if you were advertising this service and and on, on Facebook and social media, how many more people would walk through your door wanting that? It's estimated that about thirty percent of the elderly population requires intervention for earwax removal services, which brings us on to our final question this evening. Um, if you want to share that one, so do. You, as far as you're aware, do your local GP clinics offer an earwax removal service? I think that might be 
Yeah, we're about there. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think, I think you'll agree, Graham. That's kind of what we would have potentially thought. It's whether or not they have somebody private going into those GP centres, yeah. whether or not they, if it's via the NHS. Um, but, you know, um, it's quite clear that you feel that there is no provision locally within your GP practices for the earwax removal. Um, whereas if you go back four or five years, there was a provision through the practice nurses, through irrigation, which is the old fashioned method. So that's a massive unmet need. You know, as I said, 30 percent of elderly people walking around, not sure where to go. Bless them to, to get the earwax removed. And, and you as pharmacy teams are the trusted healthcare experts that would be able to deliver that safely in the community setting. Yeah, well, to support that, to support that even more, people often think that that's a new thing that GPs have just stopped offering it. But actually, the funding was pulled for quite a long time ago. It wasn't a recent thing. The only reason we've seen a larger change for it is because of the changes that that happened through lockdown and the opportunity that GPs had to kind of pull away from a service that they made no money doing. And GPs, even though they're an NHS um, clinic, they, they they're all. Uh, in need of making their their financial profits as well. So um, one thing to keep in mind is those those six that still offer it, GPs, even when it was funded, it was still waiting lists. There was uh, the deterrent around you'd have to use oil for X amount of weeks, uh, potentially three, four weeks in some cases, and customers would prefer not to do that, of course. They would like to be seen within a few days, which are, is often the case with microsuction. And... Um, and yeah, your customers will actively look for microsuction. They, they won't choose to go for irrigation the vast majority of the time now. They, they've very wised up to what their options are in the industry. And even when there is the free irrigation option, in rare cases like what you, you might see, they, they will actively avoid it still, for, from my experience. Yeah, I think it's worth mentioning as well, there, there's an instance in southwest London where the CCG is a trial and commission it into 20 pharmacies, I think, and they're actually using the timber system within those pharmacies, we've delivered the training and everything, even within those pharmacies where it is being commissioned. It is so much red tape around who qualifies for it. I think they have to use olive oil for a month. They, you know, it, it, it's quite hard. And, and a lot of those pharmacies are actually taking on a private timper because people don't want to wait. They want the wax removed as quickly as possible. So they are actually um, they're, they're running a private clinic alongside the NHS clinic as well. I think they're limited to the number of patients that they can see per month as well. So there's a lot of red tape around who he qualifies and then they're limited to the number they can say right so um at the fact at the end of the presentation um as simon said if, if you want to uh type your actual questions as we go through hopefully we'll answer all the questions as we go along but if there are any questions that we, we haven't answered we will have a q a session at the end and we'll answer as many of them at that point as well okay Okay. Can I remove this pole? Just a little X on the top of it. Ah, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Um, yeah, so Tim Health was founded by our CEO, Dr. Krishan Mandu, and he is an ENT by background, and it was about six years ago, he was on the NHS Entrepreneurial Programme, and he very quickly realised how inefficient the ear care pathway and journey was for patients. A lot of patients were arriving within the ENT departments for microsuction, and he felt that 80% didn't necessarily need to be seen there unless they'd had surgery or a mastoid cavity. They could quite safely be seen within a community um, um, setting by allied healthcare professionals, such as pharmacy teams, with the right training, the right equipment, and the right back end support. Um, so he he kind of went around about designing the Timper system. So I'm going to play a short video just to to allow him to explain the background to the Timper. So this is the Timper system. It's the world's first all in one hearing assessment system. It allows you to look in the ear at high definition, perform intervention with wax removal and that have a hearing screening assessment tool. And all of that is pulled together in a ear health record, which can be shared in any location to any specialist. So as a clinical doctor, as an ENT surgeon by background, 
I really was looking at the system and seeing how the pathway to actually access hearing care was really difficult for patients. And what I wanted to do was create a device which looks at that pathway, but bring technology with it. And there wasn't a device in the market that brought all of those elements together that we wanted to do. And I thought, well, if there isn't one, why not develop one? So currently, it's uh, really challenging for patients to access hearing care. They go to their general practitioner to then see a specialist or an audiologist, but they kind of move from pillar to post. And I kind of felt that what we needed to do was bring a device which brings all of it in, into one system. And in terms of making it more accessible, the real driver was taking care out of the hospital and into the community and developing a device that had the non-specialist in mind, that they could pick it up, use it, but have the ability to access those specialists as well. And I think that's what we've achieved in this and that we've created an all-in-one device which allows you to look in the ear. If there's anything that's required to be done like wax removal, you can do that. It can then also create a, a hearing screening test. And all of that is brought together into a digital record which can be shared with any specialist in any location, anywhere across the world. And I think by allowing it to be democratised into the community, um, that's where we really changed pathways and developed a device, which is, uh, I, I think, a, a great experience for both the user, but also the patient. It allows you to look in the ear. At high Just so you know, Helen, we have got a couple of this questions. So I'll let you do your um, next couple of slides and then we'll, we'll cover the couple of questions, if that's all right, yeah? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Just just tell me when you want. Yeah, you just do the this this part here, yeah. Okay. So if we look at the current landscape, and um, this just gives you an idea of what level of demand is out there. Half a billion people currently suffer with debilitating hearing loss globally. And it, it's primarily due to an increased usage of headphones, so especially ear pods and things like that, they're pushing the at the wax back down the ear rather than allowing it to migrate outwards and an aging population. So as people get older, they tend to produce more uh, oils and wax in their ear, but also they're, they're more likely to need hearing aids. So again, you're pushing the wax further down the ear rather than allowing it to um, migrate out. It's estimated by 2030 that hearing loss is going to be in the UK top um, 10 disease burdens. It's going to overtake cataracts and diabetes. So there's a massive, massive need then. It's not something that's going to go away. It's only going to grow and grow. Um, and it's, it's, an, it's a massive unmet need that the, the NHS simply can't cope with. Um, so it doesn't discriminate, it, you know, all social backgrounds, all ethnicities um, are affected the same way. Um, the, the most interesting thing is it's the biggest modifiable risk factor for cognitive deterioration. So if you do have any weakness in your hearing, the sooner you help your hearing, it, keeping your brain active to the sounds keeps you engaged, socially active, and it and it reduces that cognitive decline. So it's really important. It reduces trips and falls if your hearing is good and your balance is good. So as I said earlier, it's estimated that it affects about thirty percent of older older people. And also, it's, it's, it's also the um, it causes a lot of faults with hearing aids. Sixty to seventy percent of hearing aid faults is due to wax entering the receiver and causing an issue. So they're, they're left without the hearing aids while the aid goes away for repair. Um, obviously, that can be a longer process if it's an NHS hearing aid and so on. Um, so interest, what I think is really important to discuss is what's happening in the US, because we're about to go into to America ourselves. And that's because um, in America in 21, the sale of over the counter human gates was deregulated. Um, so what a lot of companies are doing there, they're using the timber to check the health of the ears, make sure there's no referable conditions, no red flags, make sure that the health looks not, uh, is, is good. And then they can screen the hearing and then they can supply an over the counter hearing device. 
that isn't available at the moment, but what what normally happens in the US it will follow here because there are millions of people walking out with an unmet need for hearing loss. Um, so it will probably follow in the next year or so. Um, but until that point, TIMPA will facilitate the onward referral to either NHS via a PDF document that you can print and send on that Graham will go through later, or in the next few months, we're going to have a referral process to private audiology as well that can be facilitated through the, um, it's going to be called Timpa Connect. So lots of exciting things coming down the line as well. So what I'd like to go through very briefly is all the features of the Timpa because it does a lot more. And for those 13% that may or may not use Timpa, if you use anything else, it'll be interesting for you to understand the features of the Timpa system. So the first thing is it's a high definition video otoscope. And what that means is that you can have capture images before and after the procedure. So it's your evidence of what you've done, why you've done it, and the condition that you've left somebody's ear in. So it keeps you really safe clinically. Um, it also means that if you your your users or, or the delegates that go through the training, they're put they're trained to a stage where they can identify what is normal and what is not normal. So because you have the facility to record a 20, 30 second video, if the user identifies something they're not quite sure of, they think that it might not be normal, they can upload the video to the cloud. With the click of two buttons, they can request a remote review with our team of experts, audiologists and END for advice and guidance. Yeah, and can I just quickly jump in on that note? We don't use the high, defin high definition term lightly. Uh, to this day, after years of using it now, it still blows my mind how clear the, the camera actually is. It even makes you question how good of a job you were able to ever do with the manual otoscope. And I did that for about 10 years prior to using the Timber. Um, when, when I use it to this day, you, you'll notice that when you're using it in your training, the detail on an eardrum, it's just mind boggling. Um, and, I, and I would love for you all to experience that at some point. Um. So, yeah, it, 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 the definition is fantastic. And a lot of IPs actually um, really enjoy using the Timper system as well, not only because they can use it for the remote review for advice and guidance, but the quality of the image is superior rather than the standard otoscope, as Graeme said. Microsuction, there's a big difference between microsuction and um, irrigation. Obviously, irrigation is the old fashioned method that GPs used to use. Um, and that was where they washed it out. They had to use olive oil for a period of time to soften it, and then they washed it out. I'm not sure if you were, when a patient puts olive oil in the ear, it, it's absorbed into the wax, it kind of expands, and it really, um, it, it's not very nice. The hearing drops because there's no, no gaps or anything like that. Um, so microsuction, you can see what you can, you're doing at all points. Um, there's no um, risk of applying any pressure to the eardrum at all, um, and you can um, you can um, excuse me one second. Apologies for that. My son decided to come in the room. Um, Sorry, so with the, with the Timper system, you can basically see what you're doing at every stage. You're not applying any pressure to the eardrum. With irrigation, you are because it's a water method and you're washing the ear out. You're not leaving the ear wet. So the risk of post-treatment infection is a lot lower as well. Um, Graeme will talk you through the remote review uh, later with the Timper panel as well. We're trialing um, artificial intelligence at the moment with a few of our smaller customers, and that should hopefully be launched in the next few um, next two months. And what that means is when you take a video and image, when it's uploaded to the cloud, we've had ENTs um, labeling thousands and thousands of images in the background. So we've got to a point where through algorithms, the Timpa cloud can analyze all the videos and images, and it can actually identify if it thinks there's an abnormality. It will tell you the user that, and then it will basically ask if they want to request a remote review. So that's kind of, for non ear specialists, that's an additional layer of protection, if you like. You know, there's somebody 
yeah, it, it, it's 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 looking out for those images of anything that they may have missed. So non ear specialists love that as well as the remote review for advice and guidance. The hearing screener allows you to screen a patient's hearing at five frequencies. It takes about five minutes and the patient does it themselves. And it basically, um, it, it kind of will allow you to inform the patient if there's a weakness in their hearing. And you can then refer on to private audiology for full diagnostic audiometry or to GP for onward referral for NHS hearing solution. But it's about educating. A lot of people don't realize that the hearing is deteriorating. It's a slow, gradual process. With your eyes, you can look at a poster or try and read a book and you know you can't see properly. With ears, you don't realize you're missing the beginning and ends of words. You just feel like people are mumbling. So it's about educating your patients that they may have a weakness and referring on appropriately. Everything you do on the TIMPA system, there's the consent form, the case history where you can identify if there's any white, uh, red flags or um, and your digital consent form, they sign with the signature to, and the audiogram and the images and videos. It's all uploaded as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi. It's all uploaded uh, to the TIMPA cloud, TIMPA panel. Um, and that's where you can request PDF documents, which Graham will talk about shortly. Graham will also run through the training. So I'm going to hand over to Graham. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, so the the, the TIMP system, you, you can all see it there, there in front of you and, and the features on it, like, like Hans already covered with the screening and, and the camera and the consent form, the medical history form. That's all great. What, um, one of the things that um, for for service providers is good, good to know as well, it, it has that appointment booking system in it. So you can book your customers directly onto the device. Now, I know in a pharmacy, you'll likely have a way of doing that already. The advantage to having it on the device, one is that the device can be integrated with various softwares. So that is an option we could look at for, for uh, individuals. But also it allows you to kind of capitalize on those routine appointments that Helen touched on before. Because those hearing aid wearers that are getting routine problems with their hearing aids breaking, or those, those customers that are falling into that 30% category where where 30% of the population need this done routinely, instead of seeing them as a one-off, you should be booking them in advance and the device can allow you to do that in a quite straightforward manner. Some of the people you'll see every three, four months, some you'll see every year, but regardless of what point you see them, you should be booking them all for routine appointments because they all need ongoing care to some degree. Uh, and it doesn't hurt to have an examination of the ear quite routinely, like we do in other health professions. You wouldn't go 10 years without seeing an optician why go 10 years or even a year without seeing somebody looking in your ears? Um, so before we actually move on to showing you some of these features that Helen's talked about, for instance, the timber panel remote review, we do have a few questions there. So we'll run through them. Um, the first one on the list was, do pharmacies need to re register with the CQC? Um, in short, no. Um, CQC do have a small level of involvement at the minute, and that's around nurses and GPs and paramedics. And that might well be changing actually on their part, but the, the entire process we've had so far for several years and the ongoing process for pharmacies doesn't involve the CQC. It's currently not a registered kind of professional or, or title, or, and there's no registered title around ear care, wax removal technicians, that type of thing. And that might well come into place, um, but Tim Health are at the forefront of a lot of what happens in the industry. Uh, we have a lot of ties within the NHS and governing bodies as is. Um, and my best guess would be that the HCPC would pick it up more than anything. Um, but you, we will keep you in the loop with that. And we'd work with all of our customers to make sure that um, we're providing the highest level of training, the, an accredited course by BSA, ENT UK and this type of thing. So that when and if that happens, people who've come through our program will be able to register accordingly. Graeme, is it um, worth pointing out because obviously some pharmacies do you use nurses to deliver services? Yeah. If it was a nurse that was delivering the service, that would be a different answer. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't a technician or a dispenser, but you were using a nurse that came into your pharmacy, you would have to obviously look into the regulation around CQC because they are a listed healthcare professional with the CQC. Yeah. Great. Next question was, how heavy is it? It's a good question. Um, so... 
it's it's not particularly heavy. It, it's a fairly lightweight device. It is just a phone that is built into that cradle. However, even if you just had the phone on its own and you have to hold your phone out in front of you for the next five minutes, I guarantee, unless you're He-Man, your shoulder's going to hurt. So um, it actually more comes down to technique than it does the device itself. We will train you on that. We'll show you how to hold it in the most comfortable way. So we'll we'll run through all that with you on your training. And um, I would like to think as long as you've you've listened to our training, you won't find it that you struggle in any way. Is it about the chair as well? So for the yeah, clinician, the if they have a chair that's adjustable, it means that you're not in different positions depending on the height of the patient. So that 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 that's beneficial if you have a chair that is actually a height adjustable. It's a good point because I've worked in some horrendous rooms with people trying to provide the service, but the room itself really isn't the issue. You can work in all different size consultation rooms. I'm well aware pharmacies don't always have the best room in, in itself. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's more the seating, like Helen was saying. Ideally, you would have height adjustable chairs. Ideally, they'll be able to swivel. Um, but again, we'll talk you through all your options on the training so we can really highlight what your best options would be. Um, I'll answer the infection one, Helen. I don't know if you want to ask, answer, uh, answer a couple as well. Um, we'll probably not. If they keep coming through, we'll not answer them all uh, right now. We'll, we'll circle back to them. But just on this next one. What happens if there's an infection outer or middle or, or in it here? Um, so in reality, if there's an infection there, hopefully being in a pharmacy, you have the ability to manage the infection internally, or you'll be able to use the digital records that we provide to involve the GP. Now, as far as the microsuction and actually removing debris or wax from the ear goes, that'll depend on the customer. Now, if, if, they're, if they're in a lot of discomfort or it's not appropriate to touch and remove that ear, you would hopefully have the, the ability to decide that regardless of your training or not. But with our training, we'll also cover when it's appropriate to potentially intervene with microsuction. That's more along the lines of there was so much debris that the treatments for the ear infection wouldn't be effective. That's the point when potentially with the right level of experience, you would intervene with microsuction as well. But again, that will be a training thing that we go through with you. Outer and uh, sorry, inner and middle ear infections are a different thing altogether. There are red flags around that. And there are also some that you can manage yourself internally. But again, that comes down to a training thing. We will cover all that with you. But the advantage you have is regardless of whether you're a perfect clinician or not, you have advice and guidance from our ENT doctors and audiologists on tap when you need it. And you can just ask us what to do with this particular case, that particular infection, and what you should do as your next steps with that customer. Okay. Is it worth mentioning as well that a lot of pharmacies, they have PGDs, um, so they can, even if they're not IPs, um, they can use their PGD for otitis externa or otomycosis and things like that. So if you do introduce this service, it's worth looking at what PGDs are available um, so you can treat those minor conditions yourselves as well. Yeah, great. Uh, there was actually two questions there on Wi-Fi as well. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, so yes, so you, you ideally, if you've got Wi-Fi in your pharmacy, you would want to keep the Timper system connected to the Wi-Fi, and when you complete the appointment, all the data is uploaded automatically. If you don't have Wi-Fi, you can use your mobile phone as a hotspot. That's absolutely fine, and then you can connect it via hotspot to your mobile phone and then upload the data. I would recommend uploading the data every few appointments because you don't want to get to the end of the day and you've got 10 appointments with lots of media files to upload it, it would take a long time so you'd want to upload the data every few appointments what that means is that it kind of um, leads us into another thing that you can uh, you know insurance permitting you can deliver this as a home visit service as well the equipment is incredibly portable and um, it allows you you can use the timber offline so it means that you can if somebody's housebound or if you want to go into a care home just opens up other options for you as a domiciliary service as well for your local community uh yes a pharmacy technician can perform microsuction um on a dispenser as well the minimum qualification is an mvq level two or equivalent which i believe is five gcses a to c ideally with some clinical experience that's why within pharmacy it tends to be the technician or the dispenser and if I'm honest with you it's better if it's technician or dispenser led a lot of pharmacists want to train to do the service they want to know what's going on within their pharmacy 
they won't be able to intervene if there's any abnormality or any complex um, situation. But you don't want to be, you know, you could get to a point where you're doing 10, 15, 20 appointments a week and it wouldn't be practical for the pharmacist to be doing that and be, you know, each appointment will take about 30 minutes. So ideally, the most successful pharmacies, it is technician or dispenser led predominantly. They'll drive it, they'll own it and love it. Does he have to form suit or can any member of staff? Do? Yeah, we'll I think we've just yeah. answered that yeah. question, haven't we? So yeah, we'll stop there with the questions anyway. I think that was about it anyway, wasn't it? So um, we can we can look at more as we go through it. Um, so uh, we're going to walk you through the panel at cloud-based soft software, the ENT reviews, uh, something we call a clinic lookup, which is a part of our marketing support. So I get a bit of an easier job where I'm basically walking you through my screen, talking you through what we're actually doing at the time, and also sharing a couple more videos on um, the remote review and the training side of stuff. Once we've covered that, hopefully that won't take too long. Uh, we'll talk about the prices and how you might look to implement it into your, your pharmacy. Okay, so I'm just gonna hopefully load up my webpage there. Helen, did that take me through to the Timber panel? Yeah. Yep. Great. Just log in now, yeah. Great. Yep. So I'm just gonna log in there. So this is essentially a Timber panel. This is our cloud-based backend system. You guys can access this from your phone, your laptop, your tablet. You'll have some way of accessing it within your pharmacy. And uh, essentially, it is a database of all the customers that you've seen on the device. Now, you will log on and you'll have a secure area created just for you and your pharmacy. Uh, nobody else outside that can see uh, any GDPR sensitive customer data or anything like that. Obviously, us here at Timber Health, we can see some of the uh, digital content, but nothing identifiable to the customers, which I will show you very soon. Um, so the first page we land on here is fairly straightforward. It's just like a statistic page. Good for those managers or, or business owners who want to keep tabs on how many wax removals they're seeing, how many of them were successful, how many opinions your team are asking for. And that might be a good highlight of do they need extra support or are they actually getting the best use out of the system? But this is a good little area for administrators to keep an eye on the business and how it's growing. The clinicians themselves, though, will likely come to the patient section or the planner section. And this is where they'll see their customers past and present. So you can when you bring people in for those routine appointments, you can keep an eye on what was done last time. You can search by uh, date they were seen, who was seen them, what appointment, and whether the appointment was completed. Okay. So the clinician would click on one of the appointments here and it would load up the customer record. As you can see on the customer record here, it'll say what appointments they've had, any hearing tests, consent forms with all their medical questionnaires, whether they signed to have the procedure and GDPR sensitive uh, data on here. It will also have a, a comment section for, for clinicians to keep good gold standard records. And typically the one we've clicked onto doesn't have any pictures or videos. So let's click onto somebody else. Hopefully the next one does. So this is just a demo record for us. It's not an actual uh, pharmacy one. So that's why that one didn't have any pictures or videos, but hopefully this one does. And it does, great. So just before um, we go any further, these this database of customers, first and foremost, is your clinical governance. If a customer was to ever claim that you've damaged their ear, you've got all the pictures, videos, and consent forms to protect yourself from that liability point of view. As we know, microsuction is incredibly safe and the TIMP system has a few extra safety features built into it to really make sure that we're not gonna be causing any harm, but we can't rely on customers to, to be as flexible with us on that. So um, it's good to have the security of all these records saved to that cloud-based system after every appointment that you've seen them for. Now, Helen touched on um, the, the machine learning for that artificial intelligence. Now, that is something that we're piloting and developing. However, it does already run in the background. It's just not live to the extent where you guys are involved. So currently, um, the images are scanned and abnormal ears are flagged for ENTs to have a little look at. But because it's still in its infancy, anybody who knows anything about machine learning will know that it takes many years to make it uh, almost bulletproof. But we have been developing it for many years now. 
So in good time, hopefully only a handful of months, we will have that safety net for you guys where if you did miss an abnormal year, and that can happen to anybody regardless of your experience, once it's uploaded to this backend software, the, the backend software will be scanning each image as it comes in and will notify you whether it thinks that he is abnormal or not. And you can decide whether you need to look into it further and get some support from us. So it's a nice safety net there to have, regardless of what experience you've got. Now, all of this data on here, because it's a digital record, it can be shared anywhere you need to share it. It's as simple as clicking the download button, deciding what, you, what content you want to be in that. Uh, so pictures, videos, case history, and you basically just hit the download button, should only take a few seconds to download. Typically, I kind of see the bottom of my screen. One second, About just a second. Once this is downloaded, you'll have a document which you can email and share wherever required. Maybe the customer wants a copy, but the prime example is actually uh, the GP. Obviously, we may well need to do referrals to the GP and involve the GP uh in some medical um referrals but this can work great for your customer because it means they can get reduced waiting times and not have to wait for the gps to be in, involved in person it's great for the gp because they're already trying to reduce the level of contact they have it's also great for you guys because if you do it right and you build the relationships right the gp will soon realize that if they send you all of their ear related customer problems you will remove the wax for that problem because they will all have some wax that is often obstructing the eardrum and stopping you fully assessing the health of that ear you can remove that and then if the gp does need to be involved they can be involved via the record a lot of gps these days will diagnose prescribe and refer from the record because they can see inside the person's ear and, and make those decisions remotely which is a no-brainer to a gp these days now a lot of people use this backend software also to promote their business and, and make the most out of their marketing. The key way of doing that is the wax removal videos. Uh, let's just see if one of these will load up. I'm not sure if this is even the wax removal video or not, but we will have a look. So essentially, um, you may know this, you may not, but people are absolutely obsessed with watching wax removal videos. I'm not sure why, couldn't tell you why, but people sit on a night, they scroll through Facebook and they're watching people have their wax removed. A bit like uh, that Dr. Pimple Popper a handful of years back. But the advantage to you guys, whether you like it or not, you can do your wax removal video, upload it to Facebook. You can pay Facebook as something as small as a, as a fiver and they will market it for you as and they will put it into thousands of news feeds within your radius that you've selected. And that's just getting your brand out there and marketing the service to all these different people. Now, this isn't just about boosting wax removal revenue, which it will. It's also about getting the pharmacy brand and services out there, meaning that people from other communities and other pharmacies decide to come to your pharmacy rather than the one that's local to them because they know they can come get these other services from you. So hopefully tying in these types of services, not just wax removal, will boost the overall life of the pharmacy because we know how difficult it is and how busy the pharmacies are these days just to keep the, the basic standards. So as you can see there, this is just a wax removal video and you'll be able to share this uh, online or with customers or GP or whoever else needs to see it. And anybody who isn't sure what's going on here, this is the eardrum at the back. But of course, we would train you on everything that you need to know about the anatomy, physiology and pathologies that happen within the ear. Great. So I am going to close that off and hopefully go back to the presentation. Now, um, I was going to walk you through the remote review on the actual timber panel. The, but I've decided to use a video instead because I actually really like this video. It's quite a short one. I think it's about 40 or 50 seconds, but it really captures the, the, the elements of remote review. Now, to give you a brief overview before you watch the video, remote review is essentially when you see an abnormal ear, and you will because there's plenty of them, instead of panicking or referring them all to the hospital or even just thinking you're not quite sure on the way, best way to proceed, all you have to do is click a couple of buttons and then you'll have a, an opinion from one of our team telling you what you're looking at and what you should do next. Now that might come from an audiologist, it might come from an ENT doctor, that'll depend on who's required, depending on whether it's medical or whether it's something audiological. Okay, so I'm gonna click the play button here. You can see how a pharmacy uses that remote review to get the, the, the most out of their clinic. 
TIMPA has a grand mission to help everybody access top quality ear and hearing care. The remote review just takes it to another level. Good morning. Good How morning. can I help you today? I'm here to get my ears checked today. Clinicians describe it as like having on tap their own ENT and audiology service access to the top quality expert advice. That really is a game changer. The remote review service definitely makes my confidence grow because if I have the slightest doubt, I would just click off a button, it gets reviewed by somebody else who has seen thousands of cases like that before. The remote review feature from Timber Health provides that first layer of triaging to see simple ear conditions in the community. We'll see the number of referrals into secondary care will be reduced. And only ones that really need to be seen here will be seen here. Pharmacy is changing. We're all changing. We should embrace that change. Fantastic. So um, hopefully that hits home the importance of remote review, but just, just to highlight a couple of things, uh, that is fantastic for your customer because a lot of the time whenever there's an abnormal ear, because GPs aren't able to manage a lot of ear problems, they're often referred to the hospital. And as Helen mentioned at the beginning, a lot of the time once they're actually seen in the hospital, it was deemed that it could have been dealt with in the community. So by doing this remote review, you're saving the vast majority of your customers actually the trip to the hospital on that huge waiting list. They potentially, you're able, they're potentially able to get that opinion from you within a day that they would have to wait eight months to 10 months in the hospital quite easily in a lot of areas to see an ENT doctor. Um, now, it's also great for the GP because it's going to reduce their uh, referral rate and hopefully stop wasting some of their resources when it comes to referrals. But it's also great for you guys, because although you are in that clinic running a service somewhat on, out on your own in a profession that um, you didn't study four years uh, in, you're not actually there working alone. You always know you've got advice and guidance whenever you need it from us, allowing you to retain more customers. Because what you'll find a lot of the time is our specialists will tell you that, yeah, that year is abnormal. You're correct. This is how you're going to manage it. And you're going to keep an eye on them each year, meaning you can keep bringing those customers back for more and more appointments. Great. So that's the remote review. Now, um, let's, let's go ahead. So I want to talk through the marketing materials. Now, the marketing materials is something that uh, our marketing team has put together for us and to share with you guys. Um, but we've actually released a new feature called Clinic Lookup, which we'll come on to really soon. It's, it's a really exciting feature. And some of you might have already heard it because we've been doing a lot of promotion around it for the last few weeks. But just to give you um, a, a quick overview of the marketing materials that we've created and do supply to our customers, we have, we have leaflets, as you can see on the left-hand side there, we have the leaflet stands, we have posters, which you can have for your windows and, and for your walls. And we do have stickers that a lot of pharmacies like to use on their prescription bags, because keep in mind, a lot of your uh, customers may well be getting their prescriptions delivered to home and don't get to see this marketing material. So having the stickers on the prescription bags opens you up to those people who are maybe not able to get, they're not able to get services because they're elderly or they struggle with mobility and you can highlight where they can come for this type of service. Now, the digital marketing support, one of that is um, our boilerplate wording that we can give you for your websites and, and social media and this type of thing. But all the social media content we use and share, um, you sign a marketing agreement with us that allows you to share and use a lot of that content to promote your business. The only thing we, we don't allow you to do is you're not allowed to pretend to be Tim for Health. You, you are your own company, of course. Um, for those who do have screens and TVs and things like HealthPoint TV, which uh, a company we worked closely with for a long time now, we do have uh, content you'll see on the right hand side there that you can share on the TVs. It's quite eye catching, gets customers attention and hopefully will help promote the, the service quite a bit. Now, it's going to load up the clinic look, lookup so everyone can see that. Like I said before, the clinic lookup is quite a new feature to us. Um, this is something I want to point out that artificial intelligence, this clinic lookup and the app Helen was talking about before and all the other steps we're making in the background, it, that is timber help. We're forever evolving and the customers who have ever, who've been with us for a few years now, they joined us without these features and now they're getting these features just a part of the package that they're already with. So just reassuring to all of our customers to know that we do 
continue to grow and move forward within the industry. And when we do, you're a part of that. Now, this clinic lookup's a fantastic feature. Like I said, it's brand new to us. Uh, it's only been live since November, I believe. And essentially, we now market directly to the public. The public see our advertisements for wax removal. And when they do, they're able to type their postcode in here to find a local business using our system. Now, if I put my postcode in, and you'll find that I'm in the middle of nowhere, so there's not many people near me, but it will bring up the options around me. And the customers are able to do this. And you can set what radius that you want to search in. You can set how they contact you, whether it's phone or email or just direct it to your store. But the idea being on top of whatever customers you generate, and hopefully you're able to generate a lot, on top of that, you know in the background, Tim Health are working hard to send you customers and direct customers your way. Okay. Great. So I'm going to close that back off there, come back to here. So um, before I talk about the training, um, I just thought it might be worth answering any questions if we have them. Um, Helen, I don't know if you've been keeping an eye on that at all. Yeah, so uh, we've answered uh, the technician can perform the microsuction. Yes. Will your artificial intelligence identify infections? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, it hasn't been released yet, but it will identify potential things like perforations, uh, retraction pockets, retracted eardrum and the, the things like that. But um, it should be able to identify an infection as well. On the note of that, it, the, the idea to start with is it will be able to just identify that the ear is not normal so that you know to recheck it and get a review from us, which you can do anytime you need. Long term, we want it to get to the stage that it actually tells you what you're looking at. But of course, that's no small task. Yeah, I think it's about 90%, 93% accuracy for normal and abnormal. Yeah, it's pretty good so far and it's, it's forever getting better. Um, who owns the customer data? You do. It's your data. We're the data controller, but you own your own data, obviously. Um, any advice regarding insurance? Um, I believe MPA offer um, the indemnity insurance. What you're essentially doing, you're extending your scope of practice by doing the full accredited training program. Um, what, what most pharmacies do is in tell, inform their indemnity um, insurance provider that they've done the full accredited training course, they're adding this service and, and, and they add it on. Graham, I'm not aware of any issues around them being able to get insured. No, no, we've this. never we never had any issues. And the, the part of that comment was also, do they all need to be individually covered? Not that I'm aware. Um, from my experience working with pharmacies, it is just a coverage of um, the, the actual service. I imagine there probably will be a limit on how many people you can have providing the service, but I, I, you would have to discuss that with them. Um, on, on the next questions I can see there, what about data security? Uh, that Timber panel is an extremely secure backend software, and it doesn't matter how you're uploading the data, it is still extremely secure. We work with NHS and have NHS contracts, and the NHS would not touch us with a barge pole if it wasn't as secure as it, as it is. So you don't need to worry about that. And on the note of the question Helen answered earlier, where who owns that data, you essentially have a license for your part of that backend software. So that's you do own that data. Even if you were to leave us, if you want the data, you're within your rights to take that data with you and we will never use the data. It's not like we use that data then target the customers. It has nothing to do with that. We don't even see any of the customer data. It is your data and we're only there for support, basically. Um, next question was, how quickly do you reply to that remote review? It's a good question. We're forever improving this. We want to get at the stage where it's really quick. Uh, as in almost somebody sitting there on a phone that you can call, that would be fantastic. Um, we are growing very quickly and to keep up with that demand, we don't want to overpromise anything. Now, an audiologist will have looked at your review within a couple of hours, a handful of hours, uh, and you'll get a review uh, from them within a handful of hours. The only time that will take longer is if an ENT doctor needs to be involved because they're not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs waiting for you to ask an opinion. They are ENT doctors working in a hospital and they are rotated with us on, 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 a, on a contract with us to do certain hours and certain days to cover this remote review. Now, you probably wait between 24 and 48 hours for the ENT review, but I've seen it within a couple of hours. It, we just don't want to overpromise that, okay? 
Graham, just before you move on, because you're going to cover the training program yeah. and how long it takes and, and, and so on. Simon said he wanted to come in on the insurance side yeah. of things. <laughs> Oh no, it's just sorry, just to clarify that I can take the question back to my colleagues in the NMPA in insurance and, and help clarify that in a follow-up email. But I'm not in the insurance team myself, so oh. unfortunately <laughs> can't advise. But uh, yeah, no, just to just to say that really. So thank you. Fantastic. Thanks for that. So um yeah, the last question about the training there. Um we'll we'll cover the training now. And if you have if you're still not sure on the training after we've covered it, uh we, we can circle back to the question itself. Okie dokie. So the slide we're looking at at the minute um, essentially is a breakdown of the training and it's uh, pretty straightforward. We are, like I touched on before, a fully accredited course, uh, BSA, EMT, UK, b -Shaw, they all accredit our training and we pride ourselves on that because we do deliver the, the highest standard of training when it comes to wax removal in the UK. Now, uh, the, the journey would start with the kickoff webinar, which is purely and simply a short 15 minute webinar for our training team to meet you and explain what will be involved in the process and make sure you can all log on to the appropriate platforms. And you can ask any questions that you need to at that stage. And um, it's fairly informal and we have them spread out throughout the week to, to suit all um, clinical times and working with your working day and that type of thing. The, the second stage in the training is um, the online learning. Now, this actually was fully developed by ENT doctors, and since then we've gradually spruced it up and kept up with the latest, latest on governance and all the guidance around uh, wax removal from NICE and BSA and this type of thing. Now, the, the online learning will take you a couple of hours. You can do it in drips and drabs. You can do it as and when you please. And the beauty of it is while you're working with us forever, as long as you're working with us, you still remain access to this. So if you want to uh, look back over it, and come back to it, you can do. What I find a lot of clinicians do is they, they rush through that first time around to get to the assessment and pass that assessment. But once they've done it, they'll often sit down and just flick through the bits that they actually really want to focus on. It'll cover anatomy, physiology, pathologies, uh, and really give you an understanding of how the ear works and what you'll be looking for within the ear. Now, the step three is a webinar that's called the webinar review. Essentially, that's a live lecture. There'll be a few trainers on there, and they'll be walking through, um, again, the anatomy, physiology, and pathology of the ear, but with a specific intent to learn about why it's relevant to microsuction. Really help you understand, okay, what would we do in these cases? How would we manage this? And just help you identify what pathologies are actually going on in particular ears. Because when it comes to ears, there's not a ridiculous amount of pathologies. If I had to guess, somewhere around 10 to 15 that you can actually see within the ear. But the difference is they all don't look the same. So throughout the process, your online learning, your webinar, and at your face-to-face -face training, you'll see a pathology, but all in different visualizations. So they won't all look the same so that you can get a feel for what to look out for. Now, the step four is the training event. Now, we have them spread out all over the country. Um, London's our, our head office where we run them every single week, but the rest of the country in all the cities, we run them about once a month. So even if you did miss one, they, they are every single month. They, are, they run from about half nine till about 4 p.m., give or take. You'll be practicing on our simulated heads, which are anatomically correct fake ears, and they'll allow you to examine the ear, different pathologies within the ear, You'll also move on to looking in real ears on that day and touching on some wax removal towards the end of the day. And you'll get to remove wax again from the fake ear, which is fantastic, by the way. The whole time I've been in this industry, I've never seen wax or fake wax to be that perfect and spot on. If, if you didn't know it was fake, you would you'd genuinely believe it was real. So uh, from that day, you'll be given your system for you to be able to go away and practice for about two weeks. You'll be looking in lots of years, starting to build a bit of momentum of business, promoting your business, getting word of, mouth, word of mouth out there, really lining people up ready for when you're starting, which will be about two weeks later when we have our clinic observation day. The clinic observation day is quite straightforward. One of our trainers comes out to the pharmacy and they sit with you while you do wax removals and assist you while you build that confidence, removing wax from real people. Now, that can be friends and family and staff members, or it can be real customers. We don't mind how you do, but ultimately, we just want to make sure in the real world environment, you're confident and that your first experience is with the support from us. 
Now, if you weren't confident, we would come back and see you a second time. And that wouldn't be an issue, but keep in mind, we would expect the service to have started after that first um, appointment and it wouldn't be several weeks down the line. So we wouldn't look to keep delaying your, your start of your, your, your working with us, okay? So the whole process from start to finish, as you see at the bottom there, will take around four, five weeks, but it's not four or five weeks of learning. It's just some little bits each time, giving you the opportunity to digest and work on the information. Okay, okay. Now I do have a video around the training. And um, before I show the video, um, the question around training was, do we come to you? Uh, when we first started up, yeah, we were going out and see all the pharmacies and me and Helen covered the whole country. And that was that was really exciting times, actually, because we got to see and meet a whole range of people and really understand the pharmacy environment. But it's not scalable for us because we see that many people and run that many different events now. I think we're running about 40 events each month. So now there is an expectation where you'll come to us. The only time that would be uh, different is if you were running a bespoke event as in you were a larger business or what Helen looks after the key accounts where they're training six, 10, 15, 20 people at a time. And those are the cases where we would arrange to do something bespoke with you or at a location near you. But the vast majority of people prefer to come to our venues because we've set them up for that exact purpose. Graham, there is a question um, yeah. on the training days on weekends. Okay. It's a good question because pharmacies always ask that. Um, we're not adverse to it, as in we have done them on occasions, but the general answer is no. And the reason it is no is because we haven't got a need for it. Um, we're running capacity every single month at maximum capacity without the need for running those weekend events. Because what we found is, yes, pharmacies want them on weekends because they're very busy in store and resourcing staff outside a store and getting locums can be expensive and tricky and challenging. We appreciate that fully. But for the one day that we're asking to be out, outside a store, um, we do think it's worthwhile the trip. And of course, if you're training technicians and dispensers, hopefully you can be a bit more flexible on that. If you were set on weekends, feel free to have a conversation with us, but they're few and far between. I can't remember the last time we ran one, probably about maybe a year ago now, Helen, somewhere, six months to a year. There's um, a question around um, how about evenings, um, there wouldn't mm -hmm. be enough time in an evening, it's a full day, the, yeah. the group training event, it's nine till half four, so we wouldn't be able to cover everything in an evening. Um, how long is the face-to-face -face training? Well, the first, as Graham said, the first stage four, step four is a full day, nine till 4.30. And then the half a day observation in clinic, um, you have to do three wax removals. The first, so you book four patients, real patients with wax. The first appointment is tends to be delivered by the training trainer. And then the second, third and fourth appointment is delivered by the delegates under the supervision of um, the trainer, if that makes sense. So if you were training two people per pharmacy, the trainer would be there all day and spend half a day with each delegate. If there were two staff to do, um, they don't have to come on the same day to the group training event. Um, ideally, we would want to do the uh, observation and sign off of those two members of staff on the same day, because obviously we're sending a trainer to your pharmacy. Um, so yeah, if you, if you have two members of staff and you don't want to send them to the group training on the same day, that's fine. But we would prefer if possible to do the observation and sign off of those two members of staff on the same day back in your pharmacy. Is that it with the questions for now? Or? Yeah. Yeah, great. So I'm going to play a short video about the training just to give you a feel for what actually is covered, the simulated heads, you'll get a feel for how people use and look into them. Once we've covered the training or that video there, we'll talk about the costs and how you might implement the service and we'll go from there. sometimes accessing ear and hearing healthcare is challenging for patients. By coming on the Timber Health course, you'll be able to deliver that service safely in your local environment. Coming on the training course, you'll be taught how to perform safe otoscopy, wax removal, by microsuction, and how to perform a hearing assessment. And to do that in a digital way, 
so you can share that information with any specialist in any location if you needed to. The approach to the training is blended learning, and what we're really utilising there is the best of an online self-directed learning platform, interactive webinars, and then a face-to-face -face training event. The face-to-face -face today was really, really good. I feel I'm going away with an awful lot more confidence than when I walked in the room. So I've used the dummy heads before when we were doing the microsection training before. So on the, the simulated ears, they were much better because you actually saw the ear and the tympanic membrane. You could see the different features there, and it was it was perfect. It was really good. Fantastic. Great. So as you notice, we chucked in a couple of cheeky testimonials there at the end. But the, if you want to see a bit more on the testimonials, maybe pharmacy specific ones, just visit our, our web page, uh, our website. Sorry, the, there's a fair few testimonials on there and we have a uh, hundred more. We just don't share them all at the minute. Um, so that might be good for you just to get an understanding of what's going on. And keep in mind, even if you reach out to your local community of pharmacies, your, your professional community, let's call it, uh, there's a good chance you'll know somebody using our system or providing the service. So feel free to reach out to them and get an understanding of what they think um, before, before you uh, think that you're the first person out there stressing about how to implement the service. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen, hopefully, somehow. There we are. And I'm lost for my screen again. Great, there we are. Okay, dokie, so I'm pretty confident that my screen is no longer sharing. Okay, um, good, that's fine. So uh, we're going to cover costs. Uh, once we've covered the costs, we, unless Helen's got anything to add after that, we'll cover uh, any questions that we have to, to finish up. I'm sure there probably will be some around the costs. So essentially, we are a subscription-based company. So there's no large upfront costs or renewal costs or upgrade costs like you, you get when you're uh, buying equipment for a service. So essentially, whether you're a huge company or a little independent, everyone pays the same £164 per month subscription. Now, essentially, what you get for that is you get the higher, the higher of our uh, modern top-end technology, which does include the timber system and the suction unit. We offer next day replacements on that if there's any faults or wear and tear or, or issues with it where we need to send something out, and we'll just collect the old one deliberately done so that you can continue working and don't have to cancel any clinics. Whereas we all know if you've ever had a piece of equipment from a different service and it stopped working, you can be without that service for a couple of weeks while you send it away to be repaired or checked or investigated. Now, the next thing you get with the cost is essentially the license for that backend software so that you own all the data and everything that comes with that timber panel software uh, that, that we, we give you access to. Next thing you get is that remote review. So regardless of how many times you need our support, regardless of how many times you ask our ENT doctors for opinions, uh, there is no additional cost for that. And we would encourage your team to use it as much as they need, whether that be for a training purpose or you have came across a tricky bit of wax that you can't get out and you just want our opinion on how to do it, things like that. Use it as much or as little as you feel the need for it. And I would like to go to the extent that regardless of what experience you get, you will always use it. I've been in audiology 14 years and I'm um, holding my hands up. There is still plenty that I see that I have no clue what's going on. And I can't wait to, to the ENT to tell me what's going on. And I can go like, yeah, sure, I knew that, of course. Yeah. Um, so the final thing you get from us is that marketing support and primarily the clinic lookup. Now, the clinic lookup, um, essentially, like I said, we're going to be directing customers to you. But there is no referral fee for that, as in we don't charge you per lead. It's not like there's a £10 charge every time we direct a customer to you. We're doing that because we want you to be successful. So um, keep in mind that that subscription of £164 per month, it is a 12-month commitment from you guys. Now, that actually works in your favour, because after that 12 months, with a four-week notice, you can hand the system back if you weren't wanting to, to continue working with us. But that means we need to make sure your first year goes very well. We need to support you. We need to give you that marketing materials. We need to tell you and support you around what other businesses have done to make a success out of it, how you can promote the business in the best possible way, how you can deliver the highest clinical standards. Because if you're not and you're not happy, you're not going to continue working with us. So it's in our interest for you guys to do well. So um, like I said, 12-month commitment from you, but we also have a three-year commitment to you. So that's 
The three-year term is a subscription term, meaning that if our prices were to go up at any point, that won't affect you as long as you're on that three-year subscription term. So you've got a long period of time there where you know you won't be um, tricked into increasing the prices like always happens on my phone contract every six months for some reason. So before we get the questions through on the pricing, um, one of the main things that people ask me is, okay, so how do we make it a service? Well, keep in mind that that £164 per month, you're going to be probably charging about £70 per wax removal, which is the UK average for a wax removal. Don't get me wrong. Some people charge more, some people charge less. That is completely up to you. It's your service. But the UK average is £70 for a wax removal, a 20-minute, 30-minute appointment. Now, what that really means for you is if you're doing three wax removals a month, which is what, an hour and a half's worth of work at best, then you've covered the cost of your subscription. And the rest of that month, you can see as much or as little people as you choose to see, and that's where you make your profit. And I'll say, all right, some of our customers blow this out of the park. They do 40 customers every single week and earn huge amounts of revenue. My local, uh, my local pharmacy did 1,600 appointments last year. I've got a, a woman in... Um, about 10 miles south of me who'd done 2,000 appointments last year. You know, huge numbers, these. But we also have other businesses who take over doing 10 customers a week. They're quite happy as a side service. They only run it maybe half a day each week. It's not their main kind of drive because they're so busy in their pharmacy and this type of thing. But even those people doing 10 customers a week, they're still making good revenue. They're still doing a good providing of a side service and getting more footfall into their pharmacy. And even if we take that 10 customer example, just as an example, and you're charging £70 per wax removal, you're doing £700 worth of revenue for about five hours worth of work. So the return on an hourly rate is, is pretty good. Um, but it's up to you guys what you want to do with it. You guys can choose to really push it and drive it like some of our pharmacies do, or you can decide that it's an additional service to what you already provide. That, that is your decision at the end of the day. One of the main questions we get asked a lot is, okay, what about the demand for the service? What about the market saturation of the service and this type of thing? Now, just to put your mind at rest before we get the question through anyway, okay, Helen already touched on this. Um, it, Helen said it was 30% uh, of the population needing wax removal. The, the, that's pretty accurate. As some of the studies show slightly different to one in five people, but more or less the same there. Now, the, the whole point of saying that is, even if you take a small little village of five to 10,000 people, because people are often surprised at how many population are in a village, and then you would target, let's say, three, four villages, okay? Just on those numbers alone, just from three, four small villages, you've still got thousands of people needing the service routinely, not as a one-off, routinely. So the, the question isn't, is there a demand for the service? Yes, there is a demand for the service, the question is actually, can you tap into the demand for the service? Now, we will do everything we can to help you. We'll give you the marketing materials. We'll um, give you that clinic lookup. We'll give you the expertise. We'll give you the product that people are going to love and want to come see that you can utilize to really promote and market your business to its fullest extent and connect with other practitioners and GPs. But at the end of the day, all we can do is help you. It's your service. You'll run it how you see fit. The demand is there. It's just up to you whether you tap into that demand. And like I said, we'll do our best to help you, of course. Now, that was the, the ongoing subscription cost. The only other costs you need to be aware of as, as an ongoing basis are consumables. So there are little bits and bobs you'll use on each customer, speculum, suction tubes, uh, zolnas, which are the little suction probes. Uh, every time you do wax removal, it works out at about two to three pound per appointment. So it's not a huge cost, but it is something you'll need to factor into it. And um, you will also need to consider whether or not you want to provide the hearing screener, because if you're going to provide the hearing screener, that is a £25 a month additional charge. Now, um, if you're on the fence about it, my recommendation would be come along to the training, experience it, see what it feels like. And if you like it, we can add it on. That's not an issue at all. A lot of the businesses who get it, it's because they want to provide it as a marketing tool, really show that they offer these services, help the community and help those people who maybe thought they had wax, but once they've sat down in that clinic chair, didn't have wax. So you can still offer them a service and still charge them for your time, of course. Now, those are the ongoing costs. The upfront costs, the main one is training. Our standard training fee for people who subscribe to Tim for Health is £595 per person. 
However, you guys are incredibly lucky because MPA members get our cheapest ever price, which is £295 per person. And we, we don't offer that price for anyone else uh, and have never had it cheaper than that uh, for a training fee. Uh, so that is really cheap for a fully accredited course that covers everything. And it's up to you guys whether you train one person, three people, the price doesn't change. And it's not just on that first order either. If you decide to train more people as you go, it stays at that 295 price. And the only other cost you need to be aware of is uh, our setup fee. So we have a setup fee for us to profile the actual device for you and get you set up in the back end software. And it also includes the delivery of all your equipment now and into the, into the future for the equipment itself. Uh, that's normally £150, but again, with being with being with MPA, you get a 50% discount on there. So your upfront cost will be 295 per person, plus a £75 charge to set up the device and deliver the device. And then you would start paying your monthly subscription four weeks after your training event. So by that stage, you should be up and running, providing service before you started to pay for it. Yeah. Now, I don't know if Helen would add anything else to that, but hopefully that covers the pricing. And uh, we, we can go from there. Yeah, no, you've, you've covered everything there. The only thing I'd add is obviously um, with each kit, we give you sample marketing assets, yep. 50 leaflets, 50 prescription bags, stickers. Yep. We give you the template to have posters printed. We share digital imagery and the boilerplate wording and so on. If you do want to order more marketing assets, if you find that the leaflets work really well for you as a pharmacy, you can order more at cost price. So it's not unlimited marketing leaflets and things like that, but... Um, and we do it at cost price for you. We don't make money on it. And, and on top of that, we do on just as well as sending them the marketing materials out to get you started. We also send out a starter pack of consumables. So it's not a huge pack. I think it's about 10 customers worth, but enough to get your know, first day or two done, get a bit of money and revenue coming through for the service before you decide to have to uh, buy yourself some additional con consumables, which you'll buy as and when you can get them from us before somebody asks. But it's up to you where you get them from, but we do supply them and uh, we'll do our best to keep that effective, quick, in-house for you. Okay. So somebody wants to know, are you from the northeast? <laughs> yes. No. 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 It doesn't help that I've got a sinus problem and I'm very lazy. <laughs> That's adding to the the, the northeastness. Yeah. If the subscription is stopped for whatever reason, will pharmacy still have access to that? Yeah, you own you own the patient records. We um you wouldn't have access to the Timper Cloud. We would give you that data in in some format of your choice. Um, you wouldn't so you wouldn't be able to still access the Timper Cloud, but you you would be giving your data in a in a spreadsheet or or whatever. <clears throat> is the cost of Oh, yeah, we've answered the cost of the training. Can the kit be shared between two sites? Yes, um, if you have two pharmacies that are close. The only thing I would say around sharing it between two sites, people don't want to wait a long time for wax removal. So, yes, they'll, they'll be prepared to wait two, three days because, they, you know, ideally they'd use olive oil for a few days before the treatment anyway. You wouldn't want it just once a week because they will find somewhere else to go. So you can the, the equipment is is portable. You can you can move it around. Um, so yes, you can. But yeah. you want the users to have regular access to it. So if that person was using it and moving between the two sites, that would probably work better than them only having access to the equipment every so often because they get better and better with experience. We find that. A lot of pharmacies look at that as first option. And then after a handful of weeks or even maybe a couple of months of running the service, um, they see the demand for it. And logistically, it's not as easy as they've maybe thought. And they often uh, invest in an extra timber. But there's nothing to stop you giving that a go firstly and, and growing it from there, of course. Mm -hmm. um, the next question, Graham, you'd probably be good to answer this. Uh, can the service be provided to children or adults only? Yeah, so um, a TOSC beat is five and up. So um, that's good because even if you can't manage a young child for wax removal, at least you can tell them what's going on. You'll actually find the younger children, the parents will think it's wax because they're getting pain or dullness. It's generally not wax. You know, generally it's a form of otitis media with a fusion like that, that childhood glue, yeah, just to a mild extent. Uh, and you guys might have ways of managing that internally, but feel free to ask our remote review clinicians opinions on how to manage those, those symptoms. As far as the microsuction is concerned, uh, it used to be 
very loose the guidance as in it was 16 and over and then there was also an experience part that if you had the relevant experience you could do it on younger depending on the individual uh, and the circumstances and that type of thing however that is literally just changed about a month ago it's quite clear now it is 18 and over for my wax removal uh, which is a shame but that is just what it is but you will find that children getting wax wax problems is actually quite uncommon and um, hopefully the ones that do get it can be managed in the hospital very quickly once you've sent the pictures and videos to the GP and they can identify what the issue is and get them dealt with in a timely manner rather than waiting for the, the wrong appointment. If that I makes think sense. anatomically their ear is straighter and yeah. shorter so olive oil tends to work with children sure, a lot yeah. better because they haven't got the two bends to navigate the work of what wax around. Definitely. How do we dispose of clinical waste? Um, so uh, the, the, the wax, it can come out of the ear as a wax plug that you can take off with a cotton bud and dispose of in the bin. Um, it isn't, it's only offensive waste. It, and lo as long as there's no infection present, it, it's, it's, you know, you don't have to dispose of it clinically in that respect. It's just offensive waste. The wax that goes into the suction unit, you're giving guidance through the training, but what you would want to do is wash it out with warm soapy water and flush it down the toilet or sink. But you can use Milton and, and, and sterilizing fluids like that within the actual canister where you capture um, the actual um, wax. What tends to happen is you, you, there's no water involved in the process, but if any wax blocks the zolna, the suction probe, you'll dip it in water to suck the water up the tube. So that's why you'd get fluid in the suction unit more so. Yeah, no, that's great. And um, the next one, 70 pound for both years. It, realistically, it's up to you what you charge. I find a lot of businesses charge for the appointment, the consultation, regardless whether it's one year, two years, you're using the same amount of consumables, more or less the same amount of time, give or take a few few minutes. Um, so most places are charging a set fee for the appointment and the service that you're providing. However, if you want to charge less for one year and more for the, the other, that's fine. What you'll find though is if you're charging £40 for one and £70 for two, just as an example, the vast majority of people, when you come in, the reason they thought it's one year is because they're getting a symptom in, let's say, their right ear. And you can remove that, and that's great. But when you look in the left ear, because you're going to examine that ear anyway, you can be pretty, pretty confident if there's wax in one ear, it's going to be in the other. It just isn't at the stage where it's giving them symptoms. And once you show them a picture of the wax that's in their left ear, even if they haven't been aware of it, they're going to want it removed because, well, it's there. They don't want wax in their ear, and you've already started that consultation. So the beauty of microsuction is you don't have to wait for the ear to be fully blocked to remove it. You've just got to make a clinical decision on whether it's beneficial to remove it, as in, is it getting towards blocking the ear, or is it impacting them in other ways, or could it impact them in, in due course? So you'll find that even if you're advertising £40 for one year, the vast majority of customers would still be paying the £70 because they will probably still need the two years. We do have customers who charge a lot more. Uh, there's a customer, I'm not going to name who it is, but in London, who charges just shy of 150 quid for an appointment, but they're in London city centre and their demographics are a little bit different to some of the UK. So you can't always compare yourself to, to things like that. Um, there's a question there about insuring the equipment. Helen, what did Nick talk to us about that? So I'm trying to think what <laughs> Yeah, so the, obviously uh, you never own the equipment. So if it was lost or stolen, you would have to pay to replace the equipment. So you would put it on your, obviously, um, contents insurance within the pharmacy. You'd add it. Um, so to in, ensure the timber system itself, the value of the timber system kit itself is about £2,000. The suction unit is about £600. Um, so it depends on your particular insurance whether or not you need to name it but you don't own it you would have to pay if you obviously if it was lost or stolen if for example you um you drop the timber system and the screen cracked we wouldn't charge you to replace the timber system we would only charge for the replacement of the screen and in my three years working for Timpa, I've only known of that happen once. We didn't actually charge to replace the screen. We just replaced the Timpa for them. So, um, yeah, you would you would have to insure it in case it got lost or stolen. Um, but it's going to be kept in the store. Anyway. Yeah, I can't think of anybody in the last few years who's had a lost Timpa. 
please, nobody on this call be the first person that I get a call from about a lost timber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think that's I don't think I've came across that. But it's it's a good question because anything's possible, I suppose. But it comes in a nice fancy case. So hopefully you don't lose it. Um, if you want an extra timber, what is the cost? So up to five kits, it's the same cost. Um, sorry, five or more kits, you get a five percent discount off the monthly subscription. Ten kits plus you get a ten percent discount off all the monthly subscription. So you do get a multi purpose purchase discount um but it, it's over four kits so it'd be five kits and you'd qualify for the five percent discount on all the kits next question is that an iphone and device um can be we have iphone and and android uh, it's pretty divided on what is the better kit to be honest with you they both use the same apps app so they both work in the exact same way and they both do the same thing and the the device is designed that you can't install other things onto it deliberately so that it's secure and you can't kind of get some sort of bug or or anything onto the device that would then interfere with the customer data so um you are just using an app regardless whether you use android or iphone but it's built in there you don't provide the device it is built in now, the preference comes from one of two things. The Android is slightly lighter, which makes very little difference, I suppose, but it is a factor. And the iPhone is somewhat more popular only because it has a nicer operating system, as in when you're showing the customer their picture of their ear, on the iPhone, you can pinch and zoom in like you can on your standard iPhone and get a better view of the ear. where on the Android, the operating system just doesn't let you do that. Also, booking an appointment, uh, on the iPhone, it gives you a list of available times, which is nice because you can see what's already booked. Whereas the iPhone, it doesn't. You just have to check your diary to see what's already booked before you try to book that next appointment in. So it is just a preference thing, more or less. But th there's not a lot of difference in it, really. It's it's slightly more expensive setup cost if they wanted the iPhone. Now, it's hundred pound than... more for the iPhone. Yeah. Any I'm... other questions? No, great. Uh, so there wasn't anything else that I wanted to add. Um, I don't know about you, Helen. No, um, I think we've kept everyone quite long enough, a lot longer than I thought the call would be. Yeah, yeah. apologies about that. I blame Helen. It wasn't me. <laughs> you talk more than me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's um? Can you just cover next steps? So um, you know, is there an email address or a telephone number or what? You know, what what should people do? Sort of following you through to be interested, find out more information or to sign up um what's the best next steps yeah so uh, if, if, it, if it's okay and Simon you'll be able to guide us here I think the idea is that we send out a summary email of everything of course. we've ran through yeah, uh, apologies if you've all been taking notes but if we can get that <laughs> summary email to you it, it'll all be down for you within that email there will be a link where you can um reach out to our sales for one of our sales representatives to contact you it could be myself it could be Graham, or it could be one of our colleagues um that that reaches out to you um to talk through if you wanted to go ahead how it works is we send you an account setup form because you have to create an account with our sales and that includes a go cardless direct debit mandate for your monthly subscriptions we then send you an order form that you check review and sign digitally and we, we have to know the name, uh, full name, email address and level, whether or not the technician, dispenser or pharmacist of each delegate. And then the preferred group training event. If you go onto the timperhealth.com website, go under academy at the top, sorry, under training and then go down to training dates. Um, you can see all the upcoming um, dates, locations, so you can pick a, a date and location that would work best for your team. And if you let us know which one would work best for you, we can check availability. We are actually now booking into about March, pretty much um, February dates are booked up, but we can still double check. We need at least two weeks notice to put any candidate onto a train group training event because they have to do the pre-course learning and so on. So um yeah, Graham, anything else? No, that's great. That's great. Fantastic. So I think we can uh, close things there. So thank you to our audience for staying with us. And uh, I think it's a huge compliment that most of them have done so. So uh, mm -hmm. even though we've, we've overrun. So and, and all the great questions that came in. Thank you all. Uh, and thank you, Helen and Graham, for your time. That was, yeah, it was fascinating. So, uh, um, um, yeah, for our audience members, we will uh, follow up with you in, in the coming days. So thank, thank you. you all and enjoy the rest of your evenings. Thanks, thank everybody. You,
Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.